Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is your boy, the Crypto Siege, with another day in the life and the crazy life that is cryptocurrency. What is going on, guys? I just wanted to shoot a quick video. I, it seems like it's been taking like two hours to put this video up, but I wanted to do another video, kind of like a part two uh, to this video that I did here the other day when it says it was published on the 10th. So I probably did it on the 9th or the 8th, to be honest with you. But it was uh, XRP Ripple News, a 10,000 XRP, why not? So a lot of you guys probably remember that video uh, that I did. Um, it actually had over 4,000 views, 4,651 views. So if you haven't checked that out yet, you definitely want to go check that out. I came across a very interesting article uh, a couple of days ago. In fact, I think... Uh, the digital asset investor did a little short video about this article as well, but um, it's by Mark Phillips. Uh, so he, he's uh, obviously he's a, a, a guy who likes to write. So he's a blogger of some sort. But he did this uh, article on Medium, and I thought it was really, really interesting. Very, very, very well thought out and put together. But it, it, it kind of it's it's funny because the video that I did was really more so of a mindset thing you know it was about the possibilities of of, of something and it was more uh just kind of addressing the mindset uh uh that most people have or don't have uh, quite honestly in believing uh that something is possible and that's why i put a 10,000 xrp you know why not that's why i put that in the title of the video because i just want kind of people to kind of think about the possibilities and i always believe that yesterday's dreams are today's reality and uh, why not uh, have that kind of mindset why not think that it's possible for you and that's why i did the video you should definitely go check it out i mean haven't already but this is a very interesting read here by mark phillips uh i actually found out that he actually subscribed to the channel um after uh i read this article and um I, uh, I commented on there and so uh, about the fact that I had did this video. So he obviously went to go check it out and became a subscriber. So I appreciate that, Mark, uh, big time. But this is a very, very good read. So XRP was designed for $10,000, was designed for 10000 The evidence is uh, in its design. <laughs> I love this stuff. Uh, Graphic here says when XRP was created, it was designed to be a replacement for both institutional and the retail financial systems in every market around the world. In every market around the world. How do we know this? An examination of how XRP is constructed makes this evident. A somewhat famous quote from Ripple Labs co founder Arthur Beatro provides, and I hope this is loud enough, provides a tantalizing clue. In 2017, he wrote, XRP must be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people. Uh, again, he wrote this in 2017, co-founder, right? For Ripple. 2017, XRP must be scalable, must be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people. You know, if you guys heard me say in previous videos, you know, this is, a, you know, just in the end, XRP is about solving the liquidity issue. And the liquidity issue is a global economic issue, right? Not just here in the U.S. <laughs> it's a global economic issue. That's why Arthur Beecher was saying that it must be scalable to accommodate 7.5 billion people but anyway it says here we'll come back to this quote but it does provide some insight into the scale of ripples ambitions to be used by the global population first let's examine some of the main features of xrp that support uh his claim that it was designed to carry a ten thousand dollar value liquidity and availability xrp's primary use case is to enable cross beta payments cross-border payments that are faster, cheaper, and more reliable than existing systems, such as SWIFT, for example. And just also remember, guys, SWIFT may be a big player, but they're not the only player in the financial space. A Ripple's own Insights blog, Shannon Leno, explained how XRP is the only digital asset specifically designed 
for financial institutions and payment providers by providing them with a reliable and on-demand source of liquidity liquidity for cross-border payments. Okay, I don't have to read the definition of uh, liquidity, but you guys know what that is. So the fact that Ripple had Labs locked up some 55% of total XRP in time release escrow accounts and has been disciplined in relocking the unsold portions of each release will help to eventually drive the price up. Another, inst although institutional partners are likely buying XRP over the counter from these releases, this is not reflected in the public exchange prices because it's retail speculation that is determining the exchange prices. At the time of the writing, XRP is available on exchanges for about 31 cents. It's it went over a little bit above that in the last couple of days, which has been relatively consistent throughout the past year as prices across the entire crypto market have been depressed. In the previous six months, SOP prices ranged from 25 to 60 cents. We know that. Even though this is a massive move, it's not problematic for institutional use. It's not, it is not problematic for institutional use because of XRP's fast one to five second settlement times. Keep that in mind. What is problematic, however, is that the price movement was driven by relatively small retail investments, right? That's you and I, the retail speculative market. To move value on the scale of SWIFT's five trillion, and remember that number five trillion because I'm going to point to uh, some of SWIFT's partners here in a second or the people that they work with, of daily transaction requires much more liquidity than is available in today's XRP pool. Very, very important to realize that. If some 45 billion XRP are, are available, this will require a price of approximately $111. We know that some of the XRP supply has been burned or lost, right? Because people lose their private keys. And a much larger percentage is probably locked up as long-term investors hold XRP. That is more likely the situation. Thus, an even smaller supply of XRP requires an even higher price. Thus, an even smaller supply of XRP requires an even higher price to provide the minimum liquidity to accommodate SWIFT. This problem compounds when XRP other use cases are factored in. International remittance via MoneyGram, SendFriend, etc. Or maybe even like this new thing that I just saw from Instamatch. Retail payments, credit cards, and institutional retirement investments such as Grayscale and Morgan Crew Capital. We already know that Grayscale has a, a trust. It's the XRP trust. Will drive demand for liquidity. Fortunately, this added demand will also drive the price, which will provide the liquidity. In fact, this creates a virtuous cycle in which demand increases price, which increases liquidity and demand. So it says, so how, can, how, how high can this go? If the entire asset class, which is 1.14 quadrillion, quadrillion, Remember that, my friend, VJ. VJ, my friend, I have a guy uh, who's uh, been commenting uh, on that video, XRP, a 10,000 XRP, why not? His name is uh, VJ. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, buddy. Uh, but he, and don't, guys, don't go get mad at him uh, or say anything mean. He, he does make, uh, he articulates his arguments very in a very kind way. I disagree with this argument, but he does articulate them and then, in an intelligent uh, and kind way. And so uh, I point this quadrillion value out because we all know that everything is going to become tokenized. And the way that things are going to move will be moved through a ledger. And it's going to be moved through the standard, which is the IOP. So 1.14 quadrillion value of asset, DJ. Classes was tokenized via XRP. That would require <clears throat> at least 11,400 per XRP, per. And we all know that this particular asset class is going to swallow up all the other asset classes. Now, and if, you, if you've been doing your homework and, you, and, you, and you've looked into W3C, the Worldwide Consortium, and you know that they have a, a working money group to globalize and standardize standardized international payments via the web. In other words, everything is going to be connected 
to everything. And, and uh, I may or may not show some of that on this video here today. I don't know. I just like that. I feel like I got like 20 tabs open <laughs> just kind of confirming more and stuff of, of the argument and the possibility of a 10,000 XRP. But so so high can it go if this entire one point uh, one four quadrillion value of all asset classes was tokenized via XRP. That would require at least eleven thousand four hundred per XRP. So it says here, this isn't likely to happen, but it demonstrates the scale of liquidity that XRP is designed to handle. It demonstrates the scale of liquidity that XRP is designed to handle. And, uh, you know, I, and I believe at some point or another that we're going to get to this point because it's possible to get to this point. And I think the more and more people become aware of it, and I, I read an article uh, the other day that it, it's, it's bigger than just the finance, it's bigger than just these financial institutional markets like <clears throat> banks and Forex banks and different things in the Forex space as well. It's, you know, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, you know, doing something on eBay that you want to purchase. It's doing something on Am Amazon that you want to purchase. All of these will be connected via a ledger. Yeah, so it's a W3C, the Hyperledger, the IOP through XRP to make all of these transactions happen. So it's bigger than what, what a lot of people uh, get. It's bigger than what most of us can even imagine it can be. Again, it is the possibility. But what about the, uh, the other than the visibility? In his briefest history of XRP, James Houghton noted that there is a max supply <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a max supply of 100 billion XRP being divisible by six decimal places, meaning that the smallest unit, one drop, is one millionth of one XRP. So why would XRP is designed to make the token so divisible at a value of 31 cents? This is absurd. After all, who could possibly require the use of one millionth of 31 cents? But at a much higher token value, say $10,000 per XRP, that divisibility makes sense for two reasons, low transaction costs and affordability for small retail use. That is it in a nutshell. Uh, my guy, my friends, that is it in a nutshell. So the XRP ledger dev portal notes that the minimum transaction cost required by the network for a standard transaction is 0 0.00001 XRP, 10 drops. It sometimes increases due to higher than usual low, even at a 10,000 XRP value. The transaction cost was still would only be approximately 10 cents. 10 cents. And, and again, 7.5 billion people. Again, <clears throat> the, I, the, the reason why it works and the reason why it has to work it's because the value of the XRP has to increase. And again, we're talking about the bigger issue. It's not about me or you being able to buy something on Amazon, eBay. It is about the bigger global economic issue. And that is the lack of liquidity in XRP solves that issue. So affordability, one sense is arguably the smallest denomination that will be necessary to use XRP as a means of tra transacting everyday retail exchanges, even in developing markets, which much of the population is unbanked, even in developing markets. This could provide affordable asset access to banking and digital financial transactions for even the unbanked. In 2017, Global Fintech database, the World Bank found that about 1.7 billion adults remained unbanked. The report also noted that because two-thirds of this unbanked population have access to a mobile phone, the door is open to mobile banking services. That's what the W3C is about, realizing that there is a vast, you know, this is a massive amount of people that are unbanked, but they do have access to a phone, which means they have access to the internet, you know, whatever the quality of that might be. And so W3C, its goal, and I'll point that out to you, is to connect all of these different web via the web all these different ledgers programs institutions whatever it might be via the web that's why google chrome browser is actually part of the working group 
that the W3C is working on right now to connect them all so that every person will be able to go to their phone, get on a laptop, and just quickly hit buy, and they'll be able to buy whatever it is that they need to buy. They'll be able to send money however whether they need to send it peer-to-peer, B2P, P2P. It, it won't matter. They'll be able to do it. And the WC3, we already know, is working with R3. And we already know that R3 quarter settler is using XRP as the currency to settle all of these things. Again, like I said in previous videos, XRP is going to be used in the background and people won't even know that they're using it. Won't have any clue that it's being used. No clue. Now back to the Arthur Brito statement that the XRP ledger. Maybe I don't want to read that yet. What do I want to read? Okay, so the report. All, approximately half of these unbanked people live in just seven countries. Bangladesh, China, India, Indonesia, Mexico, Nigeria, and Pakistan. Just seven. The report also noted that because two-thirds of the unbanked population have an access to a mobile phone, the door, the door is opening to mobile banking services as long as mobile access can be combined with well-developed payment systems. XRP used in the many financial systems that Ripple Labs is working with partners around the world to provide will enable even the unbanked to have access to digital financial tools that are fast, stable, and affordable. Now back to the Arthur Brito statement. Brito statement, I'm saying Brito. Arthur Brito statement that the XRP ledger needs to be available, able to scale to serve 7.5 billion people, even more devices, a new account mechanism that should allow the XRP ledger to efficiently service humanity scale uses is in development. Yeah, I just saw an article about that as well. And I, I can't forget. I just I was clicking on that earlier this morning about this humanity scale and the XRP ledger. Uh, I, hopefully I can find that and do that in another video about that. This would allow everyone to have an account on the XRP ledger. Everyone to have an account on the XRP ledger for low cost while providing the necessary performance for humanity level services. And I did a video about uh, uh, talking about that as well. You know, and that this is a, there's a reason why Bill Gates is going around and talking about, you know, poverty. We are going to end poverty in our lifetime. Right? Because right now it may cost thirty dollars or forty dollars to send five dollars but it, it, it'll be a point in time where it'll cost two cents and three cents and five cents one cent to send that same twenty thirty forty or fifty dollars and i believe if if that becomes the case when that becomes the case more and more people will do more and more of, of humanity and especially if it's going to be used, uh, uh, be, be done via the DLT because it'll be all transparent. It'll be all open. We'll be able to see it. We'll know that the money is going to the right places. How many times have we refused or been hesitant to give because we weren't confident that the money was going directly to the people that need the money? DLT, XRP, and the ILP ledger solves all of those things. I expect most users of XRP will use hosted accounts for their day-to-day -day needs, holding small amounts of XRP, placing orders, and making payments. I agree with you 100%, Mark. I believe that is exactly we were, where we're going. And it kind of, and for me, it kind of uh, falls in line a little bit with Sam I Am and Two Light Boats. And uh, when he mentioned that it's going to be kind of like a tiered, um, I don't know if, it's, if we call it a tiered payments structure or tiered money or value structured but it's going to be tiers you know two or three levels and the number one tier or, or level is going to be xrp it is going to be the gold standard it's going to be number one and number two is probably going to be either some form of fiat or gold but the number one will be xrp and that's why you hear a lot of people like the Digital Asset Investor and uh, Sam I Am and CJ, CKJ Crypto News say there's going to be a point where you, you, we're not going to have to cash in or cash out the um, XRP. And I believe that 100%. And so 
Here it is, the summary. The design decisions that went into creating XRP structure lead me to believe. This was, again, this was the done February 18th. The design decisions that went into creating XRP structure lead me to believe that it was designed to operate at ten thousand dollars and to serve a truly global market so vj i hope you're listening i hope you get a chance to listen to this video my friend just another perspective on the idea of a ten thousand xrp and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do another video tying all this together with cls and who cls is and what exactly is the cls net and tie together with cls and swift and tie cls and swift with r3 and how it all goes back down to the hyperledger and then to the iop so i'll probably do do another video on that as well guys so guys listen i'm going to wrap this thing up Tell me what you think about this article in the uh, comments. I would definitely appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, about this as well. Again, my video, the first one, was about the idea, the concept, and the mindset of believing that it's possible for you. You know, to never think that it's not possible for you. So, guys, I'm going to wrap this up as I normally do and say that old money doesn't want you to win. Old money doesn't want me to win. They want us to remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know. The battle for you has already been fought. And the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.